Amunga koma ma abon ningae O from afar afar Enyinga manga siliwa O koma manga nga minga ada Gisi ki wa watu na ma anzi sabiwa Ana ma kamandang na anzi biza Oh, for my boy, if I am your auntie, it's all my man, I'm a woman, auntie, sing a gang away, auntie, sing a gang away, auntie, sing a gang away, auntie, sing a gang away. Tu m'as déjà donné ce qu'il y a de beau Mais j'en veux trop Encore et encore It's so beautiful To feel your love Et moi éternel Just enjoy your love À travers ma famille À travers mes amis je regarde ma vie Je te dis merci Je te dis merci Oui je te remercie Oui je te remercie Seigneur Ma veuve Wangane Azambe Ma veuve Wangane Tu es le roi des je ne vois rien, je ne suis rien, je ne comprends rien, je ne peux rien. Laisse-moi te dire merci à ma manière, Seigneur. Car ta grâce déborde Oh, dans ma vie, Seigneur Seul toi es capable D'un tel amour, Seigneur Seul ta miséricorde Oh, me réchauffe le cœur Je peux voir la beauté de tes merveilles Dans ma vie, Seigneur Car je suis couverte De ta grâce je te dis merci, oui je te remercie mon Dieu, oui je te remercie du fond de mon cœur. Azambe, 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 tu es le roi des rois, tu es l'espoir de ma foi. Oh, 
tes yeux Serre-moi quand ton cœur Rends-moi dans tes bras d'amour Jésus, serre-moi quand ton cœur Je ne t'apprécie Source de paix, à 
Elle me procure la joie, Seigneur. Reste près de moi, donne près de moi. J'ai besoin de toi, car tu es mon Dieu. Reste près de moi, donne près de moi. J'ai besoin de toi, car tu es mon Dieu. The second thing is, uh, you only will seat three persons of you. If you are seated in the main nave of the church, you will be seated only three persons of you. One person on the edge, another person on the far edge, and one person in the middle. So only three persons of you. And if you are seated at, at my far left, only two persons of you. Those who are seated on, on the far left name, only two persons per pew. Now, if, if all the kids are from the same family, you can sit together. If you are from the same household, in other words, if you, if you came from the same house this morning, not yesterday, if you came from the same house this morning, uh, you can sit together. And thirdly, the funeral directors will want me to remind all of you uh, there is a funeral, there is a funeral uh, condolence register at the back. If you haven't signed the condolence register, please do so so that the family can reach out to you and thank you for coming to celebrate with them. Uh, you have about another 10 minutes to do so at this time. You can walk to the back and the funeral directors will show you uh, the condolence register so that you can sign in as we celebrate the life of uh, answer. I, I will now invite the funeral directors after uh, to come forward and assist the family as we uh, go through the final viewing of the body of our answer before it will be closed. And so before the family comes up, if anybody here needs to view, um, they, they are welcome to do so. Once the funeral directors are ready, only the wife, the children, will be uh, present as they close the casket. So we can give them that intimate moment. So everybody else, if you want to view the body right now, please come forward before we invite the immediate family. The family will view at exactly five minutes before 11. So you have another five minutes to do so. And once you're done, we will now invite the wife. 
and the children to come forward and view for the final time and close the casket before we begin the celebration of Mass. So we have another five minutes before we invite the wife and the children to come forward.
whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant, our father, our ancestor, whom you have called to journey to you. Since he hoped and believed in you, we ask that you grant that Pa Ansem may be led to our true homeland, to delight in his everlasting joy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now as we. He will destroy the veil that veils all people, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your heart be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If they were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My Giselle, Frank, Guy, Vanessa, and brothers, and please. With sorrow in our hearts, I welcome you to St. Luke, but also with joy, knowing full well that your Father, our answer, has gone to his Father. You know, sometimes we, we are filled with sorrow, we are filled with pain when we lose our loved ones. Sometimes the pain refuses to leave us. Sometimes the hurt refuses to go away. But yet, God tells you and I, as he reminded us, in the first reading today from the 25th chapter of the prophecy of Isaiah, God says to you and I this morning, on this mountain, I will dry your tears. On this mountain, I will take away all the, the things that bring you tears. On this mountain, I will feed you with finer sweet. That is the assurance, that is the reason we are gathered here this morning as we say farewell to our answer okay. Knowing full well that he has done the best that he could in life. Amen? Amen. I know our answer. You know, we have a program here where we will we'll celebrate those who are sick. We call it the prayer for the cure mass. I don't think that man ever missed. Sometimes he will be dragging himself to come here to celebrate that mass and to join us as I was going through so many pictures. And year after year, my answer was part of those who celebrated that prayer for the cure mass. It is a sign for him and to all of us that it doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter how you feel. See, praising God and worshiping God is not about how you feel. It's about our duty, our responsibilities as brothers and sisters, our responsibilities as children of God to serve and to honor God. That's why it's a shame. Some people feel very healthy. Amen? Mm -hmm. Some people are healthy. They are fine, they are well. 
but they still find it difficult to worship God. And here you are, somebody who's been going through a lot of pain. I was talking to a guy on Friday and said, you know, if not for God, if not for but Assam's love of God, he would have been gone since 2004, 2005, right? Since he would have been dead a long time ago. But he continued to depend on God. That's what we are called to do. Unfortunately, especially for those of us who have come from Africa, I see 90% or more of us here are from Cameroon. So those of you who have come from Pasa, Yaoundé, you know, those of you who have come from all parts of Central and all parts of Cameroon, right? Those of you who have come from the motherland, the beautiful motherland, and you come to the United States. Sometimes we don't act like our answer. We forget God. God becomes second. Our job, our enjoyment, Right? Going to party every weekend becomes the first thing, becomes priority. So if there's anybody here who wants to learn what it means to serve God, then look upon Pa'ansam Pungher as a sign that it doesn't matter how you feel. As long as God gives you breath, right? That's why scripture tells us, let everything that has breath, let everything that can breathe, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything. Unless we don't have breath. And sometimes truly we don't have breath because our breath has been taken away by the devil. We come today to thank God for his life. Majesty, you have been married to him for over 35 years, right? We come today to say thank you, Lord, for those beautiful years. It wasn't easy. Nothing is easy. Nothing in life is easy, right? Your brother, Mr. Simply, you know, it wasn't easy. You have known him all your life. And even Guy and Frank. And Vanessa, you have known your father all your life. But yet you can testify that it wasn't easy. Because nothing is easy. His sickness and all the pain that he was going through touched your life. But yet, even in the misery, even in his good times and in his bad times, he continued to be a people's person. Somebody who was not a member of the family told me that that man had brought so many people and helped so many people who are from Cameroon, helped them to settle here, especially here in the district of Colombia. Somebody told me that if there's anything that they do, any way they can describe answer is that he was a helper. That's the legacy. The children told me that he was a joyful person. He was a patient man. He was a patient father. Guy and Frank reminded me that if not for their father, they would not have been the men that they are today. So there is a lot of legacy for us to learn from Pa Hansen. But let me tell you my own personal legacy that I learned from him. And it's one word. Fighter. For me, my answer was a fighter. He fought. There was one year, you know, I saw him come to mass, and, and I, I was almost asking him to go home. But you can't tell him to go home because even while he knew he's suffering, he was beaming with smile. That's why one word. For me, is that he was a fighter. So I ask you, all of you who have gathered here, and those who are watching from wherever you are, are you a fighter? Do you believe that if you fight with God, that God will save you, God will keep you, God will give you joy even while you are going through pain? 
Are you a fighter? If you are, then thanks be to God. If you're not, then the life of our Father is an example for us to remember that we have to fight. We have to fight sin. We have to fight the sin of racism. Even amongst Cameroonians. Tribalism. We have to fight it. If you are a fighter for the Lord, let his life remind you that when God created and carved out Cameroon from the other part of West Africa, right? God was not intending Cameroon to be Francophone and Anglophone. God wanted Cameroon to simply be Cameroon. All of us who have come from different parts of Africa and different parts of the world, it was not God's intention that we hate each other, that we fight each other. God simply wants us to love and honor each other all the days of our lives. That's one thing I want you to learn as you live here today. As we celebrate the life of our father, our brother, a husband, a friend, as we celebrate his life, God wants you to understand that you have to be a fighter for him. You have to fight. You have to fight hatred. You have to fight greed. You have to fight laziness. The Bible call it sloth. Laziness, spiritual laziness. Those who don't pray. Those who don't serve God with all their lives. The Bible says it's a sloth. We have to fight. I don't want to ask how many people woke up this morning and prayed before they came out. Because if I ask, I know there may be one or two persons. That's not the purpose. The purpose is, whenever we wake up, we have to fight that laziness, that spiritual laziness, so that we can come out and say, thank you, Lord. So that we can say to God who has given us life, thank you for another day. Even you, the Bogan family, all of you who are gathered here today, I know as your heart is heavy, you still have to thank God. Much is out. Tell your children, gather them. You must thank God. Even while tears fill your eyes. You must thank God. Even while you have lost your job. You must thank God. Even when you are homeless. You must thank God. Even when your body feels pain. When you are feeling hurt. When you are suffering from cancer. All kinds of disease. You must thank God. Like our father, my answer, who will bring himself to the Lord. You must thank God and bring yourself to the Lord. That's why Jesus in the gospel today, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Those who thank God, don't let their hearts be troubled. Rather, what you do is have faith in God, believe in God. Because the Bible tells us that if you live a good life, here on earth, if you die, you will inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And our Catholic teaching teaches us that death is not an end in itself. Death is just a means to an end. Jesus says, I am going to prepare for you a place. Do you believe that Jesus is preparing a place? where our Father will go and inherit? Do you, do you believe that He will come back and take us to Himself so that where He is, where He will always be, we too will be there? Do you believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, or do you continue to doubt? Like Thomas said in the Gospel today, Thomas says, Lord, we do not know where You are going. How can we know the way? So many of us, even after being Catholics for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 20 years, 10 years, we are still asking, how can we go to the Lord? We do not know the way. Jesus tells us, I am the way. Look on the cross. 
He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And so, my brothers and sisters, all of you who have gathered here, those who are watching from wherever you are, now is the time to change our lives. Now is the time for us to ignore hate and embrace love. Now is the time for us to ignore discrimination and embrace unity. Now is the time for us to hold each other. Especially after we have gone through five months of seclusion, five months of hurt, five months of pandemics. Now is the time for us to forgive one another because we are not better than the over 170,000 people who have died as a result of coronavirus. We are not better. But God himself will lead us. And so I, I call upon you this morning to, to praise the Lord, to lift up your voice and praise God. I call upon you today to raise your holy hands and praise God because God has been good to us. And so I ask you to stand as we sing this song, Lord, I lift your name on high. Please stand. Because our prayers today is for us to lift our hands, our minds, and our hearts to the Lord. You know, we gather today to say to the Lord, we thank you for the life of our Father. We thank you for the family. We thank you for ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I want to sing your praises. I'm so glad you in my life.
that no weapon fashioned against them will prosper, that not even death in itself will separate them. For we have confidence in you. We ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Please remain standing as we pray. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and he now sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for all his servants. Confident that God hears the prayers of all who humble themselves, let us pray. In baptism, our brother Anselm was brought to life. Lead him to the gates of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Our brother Anselm was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Many friends and members of our family have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them eternal home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. The family and friends of our brother Anselm seek comfort and consolation from you. Heal their pain, Lord, and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We are all assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Anselm. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectations of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and now in the silence of our hearts, let us offer our other prayers to God. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls. Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now as we prepare the altar to celebrate the unity of the Eucharist. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now it's time for us to receive the Holy Communion. Holy Communion is for Catholics who have prepared themselves, those who have prepared themselves to receive the body and blood of Jesus, soul and divinity. And so if you will be receiving a communion, please come forward through the center aisle. And remember uh, to stay six feet apart from the person in front of you. And once you come, you can pile up in one of the two spots behind uh, next to our brother's body. And then once you receive the Eucharist, you can return to your seats using the side aisles. Now we understand that there are maybe people who are here who may not be uh, Catholics who want to receive a blessing. You're also welcome to do so. But when you come, cross your hands over your chest. If you are receiving communion, communion will only be placed in your hands. So place a pan over the other, and uh, once you receive, consume before you return to your seat. But if you're only coming for prayers, if you cross your hands over your chest, the priest will know to give you a blessing on the day of comfort of our brothers of prayer. Please come forward at this time.
Let the better light shine upon them. Please be safe. Je dis merci à tous ceux qui venaient tous les soirs et plus particulièrement à certains de nos élites. Euh, J'ai nommé M. Eken et Dr. Demoni ici présents. Je n'oublie pas les membres du Shabbat pour ceux qui connaissent la petite histoire. Je dis merci à tous les Pungens qui, qui ont su être très forts pendant ces moments douloureux et qui continuent à l'être jusqu'à ce qu'on puisse envoyer le corps de leur papa au Cameroun, à Fombele, là où il a voulu. Je dis merci à certains membres de ma famille, ici présents ou bien euh, ailleurs, qui à l'heure actuelle se sont tenus en intention pour nous soutenir pendant ce moment d'épreuve. Anselme, ce n'était pas un grand frère pour moi, il était mieux que cela. Il était un ami, il était mon père, il était mon grand-père. Et pendant qu'il se sentait secoué, il m'a appelé, euh, il m'a confié son testament. Et il a dit, Simplice, je te remets l'étendard de cette famille. Porte-le jusqu'à ce que tu remettes cet étendard à mon héritier. Et il m'a donné le nom de cet héritier. Et je vais vous donner un pan euh, de ce témoignage aujourd'hui. Papa Bonheur était surchargé car il était héritier de Yonga, il était héritier de Lungwe. Il m'a dit Simplice, Change. Il y aura deux héritiers, l'héritier de Yonga Kungen et un autre, l'héritier de Tilungue. Et aujourd'hui, euh, je vais révéler cette. Je vais révéler cela à la famille dans les moments qui suivent. Ensemble, est né des parents sobres. Son père, au début, était maître d'école. Il a su transcender cela et devenir homme d'affaires. Il a fleuré la politique, il était maire. Il était un homme populaire. Et Papa Bonheur a suivi ses traces. C'est pour ça que vous voyez beaucoup de gens ici présents. C'est pour ça que vous voyez beaucoup de gens défiler chez moi pendant les différentes veillées. C'est pour ça que vous voyez les gens repartir à 3h04 du matin. C'est pour cela que j'ai dû abandonner euh, mon travail de nuit parce que je ne pouvais plus. Les coups de fil partout dans le monde entier m'appelant et me demandant des choses concernant M. Anselme Pungé que je respecte, que je respecterai toujours dans ma mémoire. Anselme a été professeur d'éducation physique. Quand je quittais le village pour euh, Douala, je suis parti faire la seconde au lycée technique de Douala. Anselme, c'est celui qui m'a accueilli avec euh, mon ami Gisèle. Et c'est eux qui ont fait de moi l'homme que je suis aujourd'hui. Continue à leur dire merci. Anselme était mon professeur de sport. En second, mon premier cours au lycée technique de Douala, c'est lui qui me l'a proféré. Pro, Et il a tenu un discours que je n'oublierai jamais. Il a dit qu'il faut être un battant. Il faut lutter. Et aujourd'hui, il y a quelques minutes, le prêtre vient de dire la même chose. « To be a fighter ». C'est ce que Anselme a été toute sa vie et c'est ce qu'il a enseigné. 
il m'a enseigné ça il y a 40 ans. Et aujourd'hui, après 40 ans, le prêtre dit cela. Je lui dis merci pour cela. On s'est entraîné beaucoup de gens, euh, sportifs qu'ils soient. Il a fait les compétitions de haut niveau. Et c'est le monsieur qui a fait de moi euh, un homme à la dimension d'un homme comme lui. Je vous dis merci d'être venu aujourd'hui. Et je dis merci une fois de plus à Gisèle. Je dis merci à toute la famille. You know, testifying about the passing of a random person is always a difficult experience. And doing it for your dad is even more painful. It always looks strange and mysterious when you are not directly involved. But when it's your turn to lose one of your parents, you find yourself living a new reality. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. Amen? Amen. It is in that particular moment when you are faced with the death of a loved one, you found out that life should not be taken for granted. All you can do is reminisce about your shared experience with the deceased. And that's the purpose of me standing here in front of you today. I'm here to tell you a little bit about Kunge Nansel. To many, he was just a friend, a confident, a brother, a coach, an advisor, or a mentor. But to me, he was all that combined. He was my dad, a man who could not be described in one sentence. My dad was someone who wore many hats during the span of his life here on earth. He was a funny guy, trust me. He always got a contagious laugh, and he was a master chief of having the funniest and goofiest looks. And he loved to have fun. That's how he got the nickname of Papa Bonheur, a happy dancing man. You could see this from the smirky smile on his face every time he obtained what he aimed for. And afterward, he would be bragging about his achievement. He was just not a happy dancing man. As my uncle mentioned earlier, he was also an athlete. He was, in fact, an all-around athlete. From the track field, where he did the 400 and 800 medals, volleyball, handball, soccer, gymnastics, and even basketball. He played all those sports, and later on his, on, on his career, he ended up coaching all of them at different stages of his life. He was a natural go-getter kind of man. And please, don't you dare to tell him something was impossible to him. He would take it as an offense. He was always up to something, brainstorming all the time about new projects, especially when it's come to farming in Fombele, or building the complex monoprix in Bafon. One of my fond memories with him is of his farming projects. I remember when we were in Barua, he had a tomato and onion farm. He bought a pickup truck to carry the goods he, produ he produced on his farm. Later, later on, I end up uh, crashing the same car, same truck, while trying to learn how to drive. I was a little troublemaker when I was young. At that time, I was nine years old. I'm sorry for that part. <laughs> Papa Bonheur was a really disciplined person. And you can tell from his handwriting the way he organized his belongings, 
the way he was well spoken, the way he was studious, and especially how well he dressed. As a matter of fact, he used to be a model for Ted Lapidus when he was younger. A few years ago, he obtained a master's degree in human resource here in the United States. He made sure to keep a disciplined mindset about his life, no matter where he was. I guess he got a mindset from his parents and from his military service, which is completed before he started working. Like everybody else, he had flaws. But his virtue outweighed his flaws, and that is something I will totally miss. Actually, there are so many things I will miss about my father. If, they, if I were to name them all, we will probably hear until next week. Things such as his fighting spirit, the way he will religiously talk to us about the new sport of Buffalo, his sociable personality, his ability to always gather people together and to even watching and listening to him sing in the choir at this church. He was strict, but also loving. It is this love that created a special bond between he and I. When I was about three or four years old, something strange happened to me. One day, my father had to travel to go somewhere for a soccer game that he was coaching. I'm not sure how that happened. I was told that when I found out he was not home, I got sick to the point that I couldn't walk. My mother couldn't figure out what was going on with me. They took me to the hospital. But as soon as he got back, I started walking again. This is the type of connection and bond that we share. I learned many things from my father. There was always something new to be learned from him every day. He never passed up a moment to teach you something such as how to work hard in life and how to obtain anything you want if you put your mind into it. For example, once he was playing in a tournament in Congo, Kinshasa, he managed to see <coughs> that famous uh, singer, Luambo Makiaji Francois, aka uh, known as Franco. Since one of my dad's teammates, actually that was Mr. Nyonga, the little brother of Jill Nyonga, he looked like Johnny Tezano. So they somehow they found a way to get to the island where Franco was living. No one knows how he did that, but that shows that when he put his mind to, to something, he will not stop until he gets it done. My father was not all play a game. He also believed in hard work. He worked for everything he had, and he gave us all he could. He was not rich, but he always content with what he had, and he would not let anyone make him feel any different. He was a man of principle, and he had pride in what he worked for and what he built. That is something he passed on to us. He taught us about what to value in life, that you do, you, you do not get value from what you have in your bank account, but you put value to what your hands have worked to build. We will miss you a lot, Dad. Thank you for fighting to be with us for so long. I thank the Lord for giving us an opportunity to experience having a father like you and for giving us a chance to be your kids. If we could do it over a million times and pick, we would always choose you as our father. To everyone gathered today and watching us live around the world. Thank you for supporting us and thank you for being with us. I will not finish to mention my sister Ivana who is back home now. Don't feel alone. We are all together. We will stay strong. Keeping with, keeping with the happy tone my dad always liked to have, I would like to remind everyone that though we are sad that my dad is no longer with us, we have to remember 
that this is time of celebration because we as Christians do no more without a hope. As it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 14, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Amen. Amen. In the same way, we believe that my Father is in better place, so we do not say goodbye to him. We say, see you soon. We love you, Dad. Thank you. de Saint-Luc qui va recevoir ainsi aujourd'hui, euh, parce que euh, Papa Bonheur était membre de cette communauté. Nous l'avons bâti ensemble. Et euh, ce qui est formidable pour ce temps, c'est que euh, toute la paroisse Saint-Luc est en train de pleurer ensemble, parce qu'il était bien connu. Et si les, on n'était pas dans une situation de COVID-19, vous aurez vu ici présent toute la communauté américaine de saint -Denis. parce que effectivement, j'ai personnellement reçu des coups de fil qui demandaient comment ça va se passer. Donc, en fait, nous sommes en pleurs et nous avons mal. Parce que nous avons vécu avec quelqu'un qui était talentueux, qui aimait ses proches et qui a lutté toute sa vie pour rester en vie, malheureusement. Le Seigneur a dit, c'est le moment. Par bonheur, que la terre de nos ancêtres te soit légère. Merci. Before we do the final commendation, I'd like to use this opportunity to thank all of you who have come from far and near. Thank you all for following our guidelines and wearing your mask and sitting uh, six feet apart from those who are not your family. Thank you for uh, making today a day of joy, even though we are filled with sadness. And so to all of you, the family members, this uh, is Mama Gisele, I uh, pray for you. pray that God will continue to be a strength in your life. But this up, may God continue to strengthen you at this time. Send the guy, Frank, we pray for you and our brother. Uh, so please, God is your strength. I know it's difficult to all of you, all of us who are here. It is difficult to lose a loved one. But if we trust in the Lord, if we trust that God Himself, who have called our Father here, who are called Him from this world and taking Him to Himself, if we believe, that he will raise his body then. Indeed, our hope and our grieving will be mercy. I was told that, uh, I was given the instruction that some of you, it was a tradition to uh, give you an offer to me, whatever. So there will be a box at the back of the church. If you so wish, you can place your know, donations at the back of the church as you leave. But most importantly, I ask that you please support this family as prayerfully as you can and as financially as you can as they prepare to carry their father back to Cameroon where he will be interred in his own home. Please support them as much as you can and may God bless you both now and Amen. 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 Please stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Anselm. May our farewell express our affections for him. May ease our sadness and strengthen our hope, so that one day we shall joyfully greet our brother Anselm again. When the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death in itself. I now invite you to please pray in silence. As we sing for him the song of farewell, sense of God, come to his aid.
Hasten to meet him and Joseph. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take him to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. Let the virtual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High.
Bonjour à tous, euh, nous voulons déjà vous remercier euh, du fond du cœur de l'assistance depuis le 28 juillet et c'est vraiment ça va du fond du cœur. En, ces, en ce temps de pandémie, ça n'a pas été facile d'organiser toutes choses mais avec le support, l'amour, l'unité de la famille, des amis et de beaucoup qui ont eu l'amour de papa, on a pu faire cela. 
malgré les temps difficiles aussi, même avec le COVID, la COVID euh, à l'église, les gens sont venus dire un dernier au revoir, papa. Vraiment du fond du cœur, la famille vous dit vraiment merci. Et tous ceux qui ont en ligne, qui n'ont pas pu venir, nous savons que vous étiez en unité d'esprit avec nous. Vraiment, ça nous va vraiment du fond du cœur. Et je voulais dire aussi, même ceux qui sont présents, nous vous remercions énormément. Depuis les, les, tous les différents jours de veillée, tous ceux qui ont pris de leur temps chaque soir pour venir nous assister, nous vous disons vraiment euh, énormément merci. Merci beaucoup. Et vraiment rester en union de prière pour toute la famille parce que ça continue. Euh, L'étape des États-Unis est peut-être finie. Et puis euh, maintenant, c'est l'étape du Cameroun dont nous vous disons vraiment merci du fond du cœur pour tous ceux qui ont participé. Merci encore. Merci d'abord le Seigneur pour la vie. Moi-même, je suis en vie aujourd'hui pour accompagner Papa Bonheur. Lui et moi, nous avons été dans une bataille depuis novembre. Moi, je dis merci au Seigneur parce que je suis encore debout aujourd'hui. Je peux marcher pour venir l'accompagner à sa dernière demeure. On remercie tous ceux qui, de près ou de loin, ont accompagné la famille depuis ce décès. Et nous prions le Seigneur qui guide le cas de tout le monde pour que son corps arrive dans mon sang et que tout se passe dans la dignité, avec la puissance du Que le Seigneur nous bénisse. Merci. C'est de vous remercier d'être venu et de vous joindre en intention pour essayer de nous soutenir lors de ces moments de euh, Tout se passe dans l'ordre, par la puissance de Dieu. Et puis, euh, merci. Je parlais de quelqu'un qui a passé du euh, temps avec, euh, avec vous. Et c'est le cas euh, pour cette occasion. Pas bonheur, c'est un grand frère, un grand frère, un ami. Et quelque part, c'était un concurrent politique dans, le, dans la lutte euh, pour ce moment dans la Honka. Mais nous avons toujours su garder la fraternité euh, qui a persévéré euh, depuis qu'il est arrivé ici. C'est vrai qu'il est arrivé malade en 2005-2006. Nous étions à la porte, nous avons vécu ensemble ici. Et euh, nous avons cheminé ensemble. J'ai été euh, très ravi de le savoir, de voir tous les efforts qu'il a pu faire. Dans le, dans le cadre de l'académie, il a pu euh, obtenir un master que j'ai salué lors d'une des, des rencontres académiques que nous faisons. Donc c'est quelqu'un qui était euh, en général très épris de paix. Il a, il a œuvré de son, il a pesé de son poids tout ce qu'il pouvait faire pour, euh, pour, euh, pour amener la paix dans la communauté en Camoin d'ici à Washington. Il euh, m'avait convaincu pour beaucoup de choses. Il était un chrétien, comme je l'ai dit. Euh, si nous avons bâti ensemble cette église pour moi, la communauté catholique de Saint-Luc, elle est née avec nous, euh, j'ai présidé au destin pendant plusieurs années. Et il a été euh, beaucoup pleuré quand la, la communauté américaine ici a, a appris le décès. Euh, vous tout à l'heure, c'est. C'est les contraintes de temps avec le Covid qui a fait ce qui est resté. Nous perdons un nom, un grand homme. Un grand homme, non pas seulement dans le Hong Kong, pour tout ce qu'il a dû faire pour la jeunesse. Nous perdons un grand chrétien. Moi, je perds un ami, un grand frère, quelqu'un euh, qui aurait pu euh, continuer à nous guider, à nous conseiller. Malheureusement, euh, comme on dit, les voix du Seigneur sont insondables. Et euh, Dieu a voulu que ce soit comme ça. Mais félicitations à la bonne heure parce qu'il s'est battu. Il s'est battu euh, à 30 ans. Euh, 
Il a, au moment où on croyait qu'il était déjà décidé, de revenir sur la force. Je voudrais demander à nos ancêtres que le Seigneur tout puissant de le porter, de le porter, de le déposer, de que la terre de nos ancêtres vous soit légère. Oui, euh, bonjour à tous. Euh, merci euh, d'être présent pour cette cérémonie de revoir euh, un grand homme, un père, un conciliateur, un mentor, euh, Papa Ansem Kunga, alias euh, Papa Bonheur. Oui, euh, j'ai eu la si je n'avais pas eu la chance de le connaître, j'aurais cru que euh, mes connaissances autour de moi, mes relations sur terre étaient, so, euh, auraient été incomplètes. Tant euh, l'impact qu'il a eu dans ma vie est grande, elle est grande sur le plan social, sur le plan intellectuel euh, et même sur le plan familial. Sur le plan social, euh, j'ai entendu parler de Papa Bonheur euh, quand j'étais jeune étudiant, lui il était déjà directeur des stades à Douala et puis c'était les exemples de, de, des ressortissants euh, de notre arrondissement qu'il fallait suivre tant intellectuellement. Et, malheureusement, euh, j'ai perdu ses traces et j'en entendais parler de lui que par, euh, par personne interposée jusqu'à ce que je le retrouve aux états unis où pour moi il est devenu comme euh, un, un compagnon de tous les jours, euh, un conseiller et, et surtout euh, un camarade. Camarade parce que euh, euh, mes temps libres je le passais plus avec lui et nous partageons aussi, c'est ensemble que nous, que nous allions aussi dans les, dans les événements. Euh, et à cette, cette occasion j'ai constaté, euh, j'ai eu à découvrir euh, l'humilité, euh, la bonté, la spontanéité et, et, et le bonheur euh, qu'il avait à vivre. Il m'a communiqué un peu aussi son esprit, euh, son fighting spirit, comme on dit en anglais, euh, de combattant, parce que euh, c'est un homme qui allait à travers beaucoup de choses dans la vie et à chaque fois il s'est relevé comme un lion qu'il disait être lui-même. C'est un homme qui, sur le plan social, était extrêmement conciliateur, extrêmement bon et, et, et généreux. Il certifié d'éducation physique en 1900. Il est vraiment entré par le sommet. Euh, donc on aurait pu croire qu'il n'avait plus rien à, à, à démontrer. Mais malgré euh, ce confort intellectuel aux États-Unis, euh, il s'est remis à l'école. Il s'est remis à l'école euh, pour pouvoir euh, peut-être euh, mieux s'exprimer, mieux faire valoir dans, dans cet environnement qui est un peu hostile aux, aux Africains. Et résultat des courses, euh, il, il, euh, en, en 2016, en 2016 euh, alors qu'il a un âge considérablement avancé, il obtient un master degree en, en, en human resources. Et il me dit, euh, Anto, je ne vais pas m'arrêter là, je veux maintenant faire un master en management de sport. Et c'est ainsi que, ensemble, nous on a pu lui trouver un autre master. Et au moment où il, la maladie, euh, le grand, il était inscrit dans un master en manage, sport management. En, 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 donc, sur le plan intellectuel, euh, il était toujours dans la quête du savoir. Et sur le plan personnel, en ce qui le concerne, c'était, comme je l'ai dit, vraiment un, un battant. Euh, il me, en faisant euh, la paix avec tout le monde, ou en célébrant, en reconnaissant, ou en, en montrant sa gratitude à tous ceux qu'il a, qui, qui a côtoyé. Il montre d'abord sa gratitude à sa famille, en remerciant ses enfants qui se sont battus, ses, ses beaux enfants, sa belle-fille surtout, Joël, et tout autres qui se sont battus pour euh, l'assister dans la maladie, le même l'envoyer même se faire soigner en, en Chine et revenir. Il montre sa gratitude dans toutes les communautés où il a été et dans tous les groupes où il a créé et en reconnaissant à chaque fois ce que les gens ont fait pour lui rendre la vie facile, la vie aisée. Et c'est ainsi que euh, papa, papa Bonheur et, et, et avait vraiment le bonheur de vivre et a su que c'est en se réconciliant avec tout le monde, c'est en, en semant le bonheur avec, autour de soi que l'on obtient la plénitude de la vie. Et mon souhait, le meilleur et le souhait de toute la communauté. Euh, adresser mes sincères remerciements à Média de l'Afrique qui est toujours présent chaque fois que la communauté est en détresse. Alors, euh, il est pratiquement impossible en quelques mois de parler du patriarche que nous sommes aujourd'hui, nous sommes aujourd'hui, c'est la vie. 
Mais je vais vous dire euh, très rapidement que quand j'arrive aux États-Unis dans les années 2005, euh, nous nous rencontrons plus ou moins de manière hasardeuse. Euh, il était certes membre de la communauté OCAM et nous avons dépassé les liens de, de solidarité, je veux dire communautaire, pour devenir il était pour moi, il est devenu pour moi comme euh, mon père, comme mon ami, mon grand frère, mon conseiller, mon client. Il était pour moi euh, l'homme à tout faire. Quand je deviens euh, le président de l'association Oka Washington DC en 2012, il est le président du comité. Et en 2012, nous lançons euh, ensemble l'équipe euh, de football du Oncam. Et euh, si vous regardez le, la vidéo euh, que nous avons fait pour annoncer le premier grand barbecue communautaire du Oncam en 2012, il était juste à mes côtés. Nous étions partout depuis que nous nous sommes rencontrés parce que euh, j'ai découvert en lui des qualités qui sont aujourd'hui très larges des personnes. C'était un monsieur extrêmement positif, extrêmement positif. Tout projet positif, euh, il était prêt à supporter, mais si un projet était un peu boiteux, un peu bancal, et euh, désistait immédiatement. Et c'était un homme de principe qui, chaque fois qu'il prenait l'engagement, il ne donnait pas 100%, mais il donnait 200%. Euh, il va énormément me manquer à moi personnellement, mais il va également beaucoup manquer à la grande famille Ongam. Il était euh, comme euh, ces piliers de la communauté qui sont comme euh, la courroie entre toutes les différentes, euh, un bon repos éternel dans le monde de nos ancêtres. Repos en paix, pardon. Aujourd'hui, moi, c'est Martin Capondio. Euh, nous sommes aujourd'hui le jour pas facile, un jour pas comme les autres. Notre papa, notre frère, notre ami vient de nous quitter. Et nous sommes à l'église. On vient de célébrer son départ. Euh, vous savez, papa Bonheur était un homme tellement heureux tellement joyeux au point si vous vous tournez vous ne verrez pas des gens en noir parce que papa Bonheur aimait la joie il aimait sa tradition raison pour laquelle j'ai gardé cette tenue parce qu'en tant que notable euh, les réunions secrètes qu'on faisait vraiment papa Bonheur va se reposer en paix euh, le pays va recevoir papa Bonheur la famille sera là et on va continuer la prière que le Seigneur continue à exaucer, à contrôler sa vie dans tous les cieux et que les enfants qu'il a laissés soient toujours un exemple pour lui. Et par la grâce de Dieu, vous savez, c'est très difficile de se séparer. Dire au revoir, ce n'est pas facile. Mais c'est le choix que le Seigneur a pour tout le monde. Raison pour laquelle on ne peut que se réjouir. On ne peut que chanter Alléluia. Parce que Papa Bonheur, à son vivant, disait toujours la joie, la joie du bonheur. Donc, les pleurs, non. Il a refusé les pleurs. Et Papa Bonheur va et repose en paix. Vraiment. I would like by the voice of my family to thank you everybody. I would like to thank you guys for supporting us. Thank you for being with us during this hard time. Actually, this is like an initiation passage. And the passing of my dad, with the passing of my dad, I'm facing a new reality now. As the elder of my family, I know how to learn and manage every type of issue. I now need to lead by example, as my father did. He was a great man, and I learned a lot from him. He leave us a lot of, a big burden, but only God knows. He knows that we can carry it. And no matter what, no matter what you go through, I always give the glory to God. I will thank and bless the Lord for giving me this gentleman, lovely gentleman, as my father. And because of him, I have my family, my siblings, and I love him for that. I know he's on his way for a better place. He went through, he went through a lot, 
But one thing I will remember about him, not only was funny, but he got a fighting spirit that I will keep from now. And I will try to lead my family by example. Have a blessed day, everybody, and thank you again. Bye, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.